because these IPv6 only architectures are the ones that give you the OPEX savings. So the CGN bypass was the CAPEX savings. The IPv6 only is the OPEX savings, whether it's uh, a uh, v6 only mobile network or some of the uh, automation in the cloud, you'll hear from Paul Zawacki from Oracle or the IPv6 only data center work that Tori Anderson has been doing or segment routing from uh, Clarence Fees Fees coming over from MPLS land over into IPv6 land for us. I'll be talking about MAP. Uh, uh, Benoit Lordelay will be talking about Lightweight 4.6. And also we'll be hearing from Deutsche Telekom, their new TerraStream model, which is heavily V6 invested all the way through, where IPv4 ends up running just as a service on top. So these are real serious um, uh, business cases in terms of looking out and saying, look, if we deploy V6, we can do all this other stuff. So be paying attention for that um, next uh, tomorrow, I believe. Finally, I want to move in to our third big business case. We talked about OPEX and CAPEX type things. What about chasing new revenue? There's this new stack being built that's IPv6 only in the center. There isn't an IPv4 definition even for what's called 6-low-pan, um, which is IPv6 over low power networks. And it's the only IP, the only way you run IP over 802.15.4, which is the Ethernet's low power uh, infrastructure, is with IPv6. So these are your sensors, your metering, this kind of stuff really tiny, tiny things. And that's how you get up to the 50 billion numbers. Those, that new stack skipped right over IPv4. It's sort of like in developing countries when they say, oh, you know, let's forget this building out our copper infrastructure. We're just gonna go straight to wireless. It's the same kind of thing in this world. This is, th there's a whole lot of proprietary uh, sensor networking, et cetera, et cetera. They're moving to IP and they're just hopping right over IPv4, and that new infrastructure is building up in IPv6. So our challenge is, as we look in the past, this way, we look in the past. We started out IP, uh, deploying the internet on IPv4 for the first 10 years, and this, this slide maybe it was longer than that. The next sort of wave of innovation or wave of growth came with mobility, bring your own device. That was built on the back of IPv4 and NAT because there was no way to, uh, to reach that growth with IPv4 only. The next wave, and that's what we're in right now, is built on the back of IPv6. So it's a mixture of the IPv6 launch, the IPv6 transition of the human internet, and the IPv6 built from scratch for the internet of things. Those two things working together and eventually meeting at the top where you have the IP, the, 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 the IP over everything or IPv6 everywhere. So what is IP over everything? You're going to hear a lot about this in Cisco's marketing. You're hearing it from other companies as well. It's basically people, processes, datas and things all talking together, communicating together in ways that you never thought possible, that you never imagined, yada, yada, yada. It's all about chasing new markets, new efficiencies, and going after $14.4 trillion. Where's that number from? Um, hence the big business case number three. That's, this is a report uh, published by Cisco, popularized by Cisco. You'll be seeing this if you, ever, if you watch any of our advertising and marketing, et cetera, you're gonna see this over the next few months. It's about enabling the next generation, the IP over everything, and the internet of, the internet of everything. And it's a, it's a 10 year period where massive changes in industries take place, and we're capturing up to $14.4 trillion in efficiencies. So a big number there. Your CEO likes the big numbers. To back it up, 21 use cases. Go download the document, there's the PDF, and you can go through each and every one. There's all sorts of math behind why it's like this. It's kind of marketing math, honestly, but still. It's a big, big numbers speaking in dollars, not technology. So there's a few examples. Smart factories, almost $2 trillion of opportunity. Smart grids, smart buildings. There's even stuff about advertising. Maybe Google would care about that, et cetera. There's 21 of them. 
And I know it sounds kind of crazy, right? $14.4 trillion, internet connected everything, but read what Professor Nelson has to say about this. Trying to determine the market size of, for the Internet of Things is like trying to calculate the market for plastics back in 1940. Now, if you were in the plastic business, you might be saying, oh, it's going to be everywhere. And everybody was like, what are you talking about? I like my wood. You know, I like my metal. Forget it. Plastic, yucky. Can't imagine it being in everything. Well, sure enough, sure enough now, obviously, it is in everything. So I think if you can communicate that parallel, they're like, oh, wow, there's something coming that's bigger than I'm actually imagining. So top three reasons to deploy IPv6 today. First one, CapEx-based, CGN bypass, real-world use cases, and examples of operators that have deployed and are actively moving their traffic off of the NATs and into native IPv6 for wireline and for wireless. The second thing, new architectures, more scalable, more automated, easier to manage. They're talking about SDN and stuff over there. One of the chief, uh, our top architects for MPLS SDN, Clarence, looked at this problem and said, yeah, okay, I wanna do all this SDN stuff on the network, we wanna open up uh, the uh, interfaces to be able to manage it better. Well, wow, you know, if I had IPv6 everywhere in here, it would be a lot easier. And that's one of the things he's gonna be talking about. And finally, so that's OPEX related, finally, the uh, preparing for the internet of everything. So. The, the Internet of Things is sort of, to, to a lot of operators that operate the human internet, the Internet of Things has sort of been this thing that's often been in academia or it's been proprietary and, or maybe it just, you know, ends up being run by some application that collects all the data and then, and then it connects to the internet afterwards. That's what's changing now because that in industry is not only about to boom, it's moving over to, from propriety proprietary protocols to IP protocols, and they're skipping right over IPv4. So those two things are building up, and that's where I leave you today. It's our job to go over, look at those Internet of Things guys, and make sure that they pay attention to the human internet that's transitioning to the same thing that they're building from. While at the same time, they need to go over, pay attention to the operators of the human network, and make sure that their technologies come together so we have one hourglass at the end rather than two. So we have an internet of things, not a bunch of intranets of things, All right? So IPv6, setting the stage for the internet of everything. And every time you see internet of everything messaging from Cisco, look right beneath it, you're gonna see IPv6. That's coming over the next month or two. We're connecting it all back to IPv6 because without IPv6, we don't have an internet of everything. Thank you. Any questions? So trillions of dollars, huh? That's a better convincing story. Uh, nobody can, can count those numbers anyway, huh? <laughs> so uh, yeah, we always thought about billions, but now it's trillions. Uh, uh, any, any questions? So we have two. And we have a little mic over there at the front. I'm just going to get a so glass of water one. while you ask. Can you please raise your hand? Yes. He was faster than you. You're on the next one. Tough question, please. Uh. Yeah. Hi, uh, Nick Heatley from EE in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of got two questions, actually, if that's okay. The first right. one, well, both of them are kind of issues, really. Do you see that when you take the CGN out in a, in a mobile operator that you don't have anything stateful? Because it's, it's all about the data bundles at the moment. Um, you know, we're, we've launched a 4G <coughs> tariff where uh, voice is toll-free, SMS is toll-free. It's all about the data bundles. So, you know, the idea that you can get a lot of data being sucked down there could blow out someone's data allowance. Uh, so it's, it's a big concern. So, you know, you might see NAT disappearing, but are you actually going to see no stateful device there? Um, in the near term, and, and, and actually uh, in, 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 in the medium term as well, I believe that you will continue to see stateful P2 
gateways, so to speak, right? Um, devices that are controlling the flows, doing the billing, all that kind of stuff, but this is done separately from the NAT, right? Um, the, the study that uh, we published, along with IDC and the mobile operators, are based on an architecture where you have the stateful gateways for all the things that you're talking about, for service delivery, et cetera, et cetera, but then you have a separate CGN for, uh, for the actual you know, natting of, of IPv4 addresses in order to get the amplification of IPv4 addresses. And it's that separate infrastructure that we're trying to get rid of. The other one will remain as long as it needs to remain for the particular services, right? I think that the Internet of Things can't support that level of state in order to scale to the 50 billion, that's my personal belief, and that mobile operators need to be looking at that to try to figure out, right, 10 years from now, what, it's gonna, what, what the internet's gonna look like in terms of monetizing, et cetera, with these devices that are super tiny and the number of connections are orders of magnitude beyond what we have today, okay? Um, but for now, all we're trying to do is make sure that the NAT part goes away and then you keep all the other flows for you know, whatever service you know, enablement that you need. So the, the other question, the other issue really is um, we've gone to our marketing department and we said we're gonna do IPv6 and we're gonna do it seamlessly and they said that that's great. Um, and by the way, can you make sure that the, the data allowances don't change? Well, it, so, other you know, than the size of the header, it shouldn't. The size of the header. <laughs> and 10% ten, uh, ten difference, you know, that, that's revenue lost effectively because we've got to suck that up no. in the network. So. Well, 10%, if you're just, if, you're not charging just for headers, you're charging for the data, the whole packet. And maybe not, I, I, I don't even actually know if you're charging for the actual header or not. But in fact, um, uh, Alessandro from Cisco is going to be speaking more about the, the service architectures, et cetera, going forward, and maybe you could pose that question to him. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Frederick, uh, he's next to you. Uh, so this increasingly darkening cloud, is that where the gazillion of dollars are gonna be, or is it gonna be in the access networks? This increasing cloud, is that where the Darkening is? cloud. Darkening cloud. What yeah. darkening cloud? Oh. I thought it was painting a bright future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get rid of the darkening cloud of NAT. Good. No, I'm, I'm thinking about the darkening cloud of content delivery networks. Ah. ah. Well. Thickening up with information. And so content delivery is something for that generally is something that's delivered to a human eyeball and it gets first class treatment, right? Whether it be cached uh, inside your network or, or, or delivered through some service gateway that's making sure to charge for it or what have you, right? It gets first class treatment because there's a human eyeball behind it for that one connection. There's a one-to-one -one relationship between connection and a human and humans are, are what we're after because humans make decisions about money and make money move. Right? In the Internet of Things, to get to the 50 billion, of course, they're machines talking to each other or little tiny, tiny devices talking to each other. And here, the only caching is for uh, optimization purposes, right? So you want to be able to, the device needs to wake up and go back to sleep a week later, uh, but the data needs to still be accessible somewhere in the cloud, right? Um, so it's, I don't see that as a darkening cloud. I see that the, the network, as it moves to IPv6 and has end-to-end -end reachability, the proxies or the CDNs go where they need to go for optimization, for billing, for whatever reasons, but they're not going where they have to be because doggone it, we don't have enough addresses. It separates these problems and allows you more flexibility and more growth. Is that fair? I think he's convinced he's just uh, cheesing you a bit. Uh, uh, so again, I listen to his uh, talk. Uh, one more question. Glad. So, thank you very much. Round of applause. Thank you.